I, I find it really tricky. I've actually gone, I've been asked the question in 2014 and I would answer it differently. And in 2016 and in 2018 and 2020, I still don't know what the right, what the right answer is. Um, I haven't, I haven't felt like I belonged. I was worried about being objectified. I, 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 I was, I felt like I had to almost like not be a woman or not be feminine. Frankly, I think that really affected me in my personal life. Like you never, like I, I go through life in jeans and shirts buttoned up to here. And, and I don't think that's probably great for me to be able to feel that I am this whole person that has a gender. And um, I, I have felt small, I have felt irrelevant. I have felt like I've been told that I'm a woman, so all I want is the fuzzy, nice stuff and for everybody to be happy. And I am not commercial enough, even when that completely wasn't true. So there has been a fair amount of shitty stuff, but I also feel like really focusing on all the things that have been bad. It's, it's, it's really tricky because you also don't want to feel like you don't have agency, like, oh, you're a woman, so you're doomed. At the same time, I'm white. I have had a privilege of higher education and I have been supported by fantastic people in my, in my career uh, who have given me a chance. And I have relatively soon, and I think that's also the sort of double whammy about social media. I think that we really started talking about diversity in tech around 2014. And there have been like seven of us founders of startups that were remotely relevant. And sort of the re yeah. probably the reason why I got the Google job, the reason why I'm um, on this call today was because it actually built up a bit of a profile for me. So I think, um, I think I try and think a little bit less now about the challenges that I have and focus on the, on the privilege that I now have, where I sit, where I sit and what I can do with that privilege.